Okay. It was from the first night. Um, it was uh, number three. Uh, you are the president of a large corporation that owns several large stores. The board owner has a plan for preventing the shoplifting in each of his stores. They play music and soundtracks containing self-abitable messages, including don't steal and shoplifting is a crime. So my part is, um, would this work from a, would this process work and why um, you know, if it didn't work from scientific research and um, my part is the sensation, process of sensation. So I, I thought about this quite a lot because it um, kind of goes along with my testimony in life um, that I think it would work in a, re a scientific research um, aspect because um, that we, uh, our ears here at low, lower levels, uh, sensation stimulus by um, hearing repeated messages, and so it can be very low and still affect us. If you ever, I don't know if you remember, but in my day and age, the drive-ins used to give the uh, sub-audible or visual messages to go get snacks, and so they, they have their their um, snacks. Uh, output <laughs> and then they uh, put it you know stopped it and said that wasn't right so they couldn't do it anymore or even in movie theaters they did it um, so they can't do it anymore uh, because it really affected people you know and um, I don't know it was I don't remember what day and age it was but the, the you know, audible things in records they could put messages in um, these recordings and it would affect people. So um, there's a lot of a lot of things we we don't hear, but it'll affect us. Like if you ever heard, uh, I thought about it. Uh, high frequencies. You hear a uh, it comes in maybe one ear. I don't know if I'm the only one that gets it, but once in a while I'll be around the house and I'll hear a lot of loud high pitch noise. It'll come in one ear and it'll stay for a few minutes and go away. Well, I really don't know where it's coming from, but it's affecting me. Like, so that I thought of as uh, that sensation that our ears uh, feel. Plus also I was legally blind in 1996. And God puts in everything that you need because when I could not see very good, I mean, I had thick glasses and everything, but they didn't work because I had torn retinas and cataracts and my eyes were just messed up. I could see big objects, but no detail. And I had no depth perception. And I learned a lot during that time because my ears just, I could hear pin drops. I mean, my son used to talk to me under his breath and I could hear him, you know? And he would be so shocked, like I had eyes in the back of my head. But, you know, I would say, I heard that going down the hallway, you know, and I could hear rain on the roof that was just misty. My mother was over helping me one day and I said, it's raining and my sense of smell came up and my ears, I, I could hear things that I never thought I could hear. And she would say, um, when the rain was coming down, she said, that's not rain, yes it is. And she'd look outside and see the mist. And she said, how do you know that? And I said, well, everything else is heightened. Taste was uh, heightened, ears were heightened, you know, because I lost one of the sensations, the eyes, the visual. Even though I didn't lose it all, I still, everything else came up. So God put that in place, I think, because, you know, you, you, we have to function. So I, I would even walk um, at that point and take a, a, a staff with me you know when my dad made me and I would just since I didn't have depth perception you know I figured well that'll catch me if I don't see something and um, it used to bug my mother because 
she said, what if you fall? And I, I, I had the feeling of, oh, I'll just get up and keep going. I mean, you know, it was just something that was there that I had to overcome. And at that point, I didn't know because I was a Christian. And that's how I met God. Because I remember um, after the first operation, um, I grew up not knowing a God personally. And I knew there was a God, but um, so I, I had to lay flat on my face for 18 hours a day with my head down because they put a bubble behind the, my uh, eye to reattach the retina. In about two weeks, your body just can't take it anymore, just lying still, face down. So I cried out to God and said, if you're really there, please release me from this because I had eight weeks to do. And uh, I, at two weeks, I couldn't. And the next morning, my retina detached again. And I had to go into another surgery. And they sewed it onto my eye. And I was free. I was able to move and able to do everything. And I said, well, there is a God. He heard me, you know, because there was no reason my retina should have detached again. So then that's really how my learning the sensations that you you have uh, that he gives in the ear. Um, I believe that, you, that, low, that we're sensitive to the low sounds and the frequencies that are around us, and whether you can see or not see, um, they affect us. They affect us, and um, if you lose one sensation, it comes up. Another, another sensation takes over. So there's a, a stimuli to that that comes to perceiving what comes around us, you know, whether it be hearing or vision or taste, we perceive by those senses. And we adapt, which is um, sensory adaption, and that refers to the process by which we become more sensitive to the stimuli that um, are the same or low magnitude around us. Um, information delayed in the sensory cortex of the brain. Cells fire off into the brain, which is the feature detectors. Then we react to what is around, what the sound is around us. And I already mentioned the movie thing. Um, the scripture I thought about um, was... Um, and I forgot to write this down. Faith comes by hearing the word and hearing by the word of our testimony in Jesus Christ. Um, when you hear scriptures, like when I couldn't see, I couldn't read the Bible at first. And so when I would go to church, I would hear. And it just absorbed into my spirit uh, in a different way than just reading because you have to comprehend but it seemed like it immediately comprehended into my, my thought. And um, I learned so much without having to read that um, it just, it put me on a different level. I learned faster, uh, absorbed more. Um, so I think the hearing part of our, our being is a really important um, Thing that Jesus Christ gave us. And we uh, first hear, we absorb more. Um, so I think that when he made us in his image, and his, he made us spirit first. And um, that's Genesis 2. Um, after he did all the, you know, made earth and made water, made sky, you know, he made man, but he didn't breathe the first breath after he made all that. You know, he he gave us breath afterwards in the physical. So we were really made in spirit first, in his image, and then physical. Um, my spirit heard the word um, of God, and it absorbed into my body. So we absorb everything around us. So I had faith to hear and believe God's word was true. And then the ending to that is that I asked for the impossible because I heard him say, you can have the impossible. When I was at a stage in my life 
where I had nowhere to go. Either I had, could have the impossible or I had the disability. And I said, I want the impossible. And so I asked for it. And I th it took three years, but um, I believe God gave it to me. I'm not legally blind. <laughs> I don't have uh, retina problems with uh, tears or <coughs> double vision. And, um, you know, that's just a testimony that there is a God, and he, he gives us uh, so much out of our uh, hearing. That.